Hello, Fiber friends. Welcome to the next installment of spinning alpaca from raw blanket all the way to finished yarn. In this video, I'm going to show you how I prepare the alpaca to be spun. When I do large projects like this, taking a whether it's wool or silk or alpaca or what have you, from a very unprocessed state all the way to a final yarn, I like to use a planner to keep track of everything that's going on. And this is one that I made up that I like to use. If you'd like your own copy, you can get that at my blog. It is free to download. Just put your email address in there and you'll have your own copy. For this project, I'm not including any add-ins and the color of the wool is very, the color of the alpaca is very uniform, so I don't need to do any special blending techniques. I'm just going to show very basic how I card fiber. The first thing that I'll start with is hand picking fiber because honestly, you don't have to have special fancy tools to card fiber. It is really helpful and it is time saving, but if you have a well-prepared fleece to begin with or a well-prepared alpaca blanket to begin with that's washed and it has a good structure to it, you can absolutely just fluff it through with your hands and spin straight from that. Some people don't even fluff it, they spin straight from the lock. The next thing that I'll show you how to do is work, um, work with hand cards and I'll use these to uh, card the fiber by hand, which this is a great invention. They're a little less expensive than a full-on drum, drum carder, and they are more efficient than using your hands. Then the final way that I can um, show you to prep this particular blanket is with a drum carder, which you can see on the table back there and it's very efficient and much faster, but it does have some of its own quirks. So I'll show you how to work around that when I get over there and demonstrate that. So let's start with fingers. If you want to, you can just do it by hand with your hands. And the way I do that is to take a small clump of the wool or blanket, blanket in this case, in my left hand because I'm right-handed and then I just gently pull and make sure that if there's any uh, tips that are stuck together or um, locks that are keeping their structure that I pull it apart so that everything gets fluffed up and isn't held in any kind of bind. I want it to be able to freely um, and easily pull apart and go into the spinning wheel when I get to that point. So that's the whole uh, part. So that's the whole goal here. And if I find any shortcuts like this, I just pull them out and keep going. This can be a very meditative process and sometimes I'll just put on some Netflix and uh, grab some fiber and just play just pull it all apart just like this. Once I get my rhythm down, it goes fairly quickly. What I'm doing here, I pinch with my middle and thumb and then I come back and pinch with my index and thumb and I just have a little rhythm. So I got that in slow motion for you. And once I get that down, it goes pretty quickly just like that. Once that's finished, I check it out, make sure it's all to my liking. No clumps left, and there we go. That is ready to spin, and this kind of spinning is called spinning from the cloud. Oops, a little piece of hay right there. Um, the style of spinning is called spinning from the cloud. You just uh, get it going and hold it in your hands and draft it out and off you go. And it can create quite a lovely yarn. 
this is the part of the video that I've already, well, this was the worst on my other two recordings. So this is the third time that I am recording this video to make everything work out. Here we are. <laughs> if you don't have a set of hand cards, I do kind of recommend it as a good piece of equipment to have. You can do a lot of things with them. You can even do some bat blending on there um, or make roll eggs with them. And uh, they are less expensive than an actual drum carter. So if that's not in your price range, but you still want to process um, your fiber from the start, this is a huge time saver. And they're fairly easy to use once you get the hang of them. So these are my Ashford, um, my Ashford hand cards, and they have a slight curve to them. They're good size and they're very sturdy. When I first started with fiber, I was told to label one as the left-handed one and the other as the right-handed one. I'm not sure exactly why, maybe so that they wear in the same direction. Perhaps I'm not entirely sure. That could just be sort of a superstition or myth. I don't know, but I did. So this is my left-handed one. And this is the one that I load first. And loading means that I'm going to put the fiber on it. So I'll grab a handful of the alpaca here and I just brush it over the top. I don't dig it down in and I, I don't um, try to drag it through the teeth. All I want is to think of it sort of like a Velcro. I just want it to grab on, but not to really smash down. So when that's ready to go, I take the other hand card and this is how I hold the hand card. And you can kind of see from the dirt smudges on there that um, I've used these a lot and also with some slightly dirty fleece. Uh, so the best way to hold this, if you hold it in a grip like this, it puts a lot of strain on your wrist to be able to control this big heavy paddle. So to give your wrist some support and to give the hand card some stability, I recommend putting your thumb and index finger out like this onto the back of the hand card and that gives you good support for your wrist. No carpal tunnel around here. So the next thing you're going to do is support this hand, the left hand, on your leg and just gently drag the right hand carter over the fiber on the left side. I'm just gently dragging it over. I'm not clamping them together and I'm not dragging through the teeth. I'll give you a side angle so you can see, so you can see what I mean. I'm doing this by feel here. See, I'm just gently dragging over the top. I'm not digging it down in or smashing them. You know, this isn't, this isn't my hair coming out of a shower. This is fiber on hand carts. It's, it's a different process that's going on here. So I just want to gently go over the top. And as I do this, let me go back to my regular posture. As I do this, if I see any second cuts or anything I don't want included in my yarn, I am going to pick that out, put that aside and continue. With the curve, I give it sort of a gentle sort of rocking motion. You can see this way like that as I go across and that helps to lift and transfer the fiber from the left card over to the right. Once I have all of the fiber transferred over, I am going to put it back onto the left hand card. And I'll do that by lifting this up with the bottom of that and gently rubbing that straight off. And there we have it. I will card across this one more time just to get it very consistent. And if I see anything, again, just pick that right out. Um, a lot of those little pieces of vegetable matter will fall out as I spin, but sometimes I get kind of picky and I just want it to look very, very clean. So. Again, I just gently, gently swipe. I want to break up the lock structure, keep everything uh, loose and slippery so that nothing is caught up on any little clumps of dirt or anything like that. And so that when I draft it, 
I won't have any hangups. It'll go right in to the spinning wheel. So there it is. That is one bat carded. Now you can roll this into a roll lag, but I am actually going to be spinning this from the cloud. So I am just pulling it right off the hand card, just like this. And that's just kind of a little mini bat and that is ready to go to the wheel and spin just like that. Easy peasy. Here we are at the Louette Jr. Drum Carter. This is a narrow drum carter, so it creates more of a roving style of carded fiber as opposed to a full-on bat. But I find the versatility in that just totally amazing and I love it and I am going to keep it forever. This is a really, really great carter to get and again, it's not quite as expensive as the full-on wide width um, carters. I, I found it to be a little more affordable but really gets the job done. So when I card fiber, the first thing that I do is clean the drum, which this has already been cleaned because I've been using it, but this little claw thing comes in handy for that. And then I take the fiber that I'm going to card and I just give it a little fluff just because I want to make sure there aren't any um, pieces of things that I don't want included in the final yarn just to be sure I didn't miss anything and also to break it up so that it feeds into the drum carter at a slower rate. Now there are two ways to put the fiber into the carter. One way, which is the standard typical way, is that the fiber goes under, this is called the liquor in and this is called the drum. So the fiber goes in under here and as it cranks, it gets, I guess we have to go the right way. As it cranks, it gets picked up. And just like when I had the hand cards and I was, I was taking the teeth just gently over the top of each other, that's what these two drums right here do, except it's done automatically. So here it comes. As it starts to catch in there, um, it'll transfer from under there up to here and it gets combed through with that drum. So that is one way to, that is one way to get the fiber onto the drum in the carter. The other way that it can get put onto the large drum is to put it directly onto the large drum. So the way that I would do that is just to feed it over the top of the full size drum gently. Again, I don't want it to dig down in there because then it won't have the benefit of getting scraped over with these um, teeth. So I just very gently let it lay itself on there. And as it comes around, it will uh, card itself as it comes up and around on this. Now why would I put it directly onto the drum instead of feeding it through? Well, the main reason is because drum cards can be hard on the fiber, and that is their biggest flaw, the biggest downfall. When you card very delicate fiber or anything that's very springy, sometimes it can stretch too much and kind of snap back. Um, and when you card fiber that way, it can actually tear the fiber, which we don't want. And the way that you can know that has happened is that you will get little neps, which are those little tiny, it looks like pills, but it hasn't had a chance to pill yet in the final garment. It's already pilling just through the processing. So that's something we don't want. But if the fiber is not too long, because it can get torn up if it's too long, it just gets too tangled and then it's ripped. Or, um, you know, if it's strong, because you don't want it to just break apart, so basically, you want it to be the right length and the right uh, integrity to be able to handle the drum card. And if it is a little more gentle of a fiber or an exceptionally fine fiber, then adding it on directly to the drum is the way to go because it will still get the benefit of being carded, but it won't have as much of the... Um, 
as much of the roughness of coming up under the liquor in. So I'm going to finish putting this bat on here and just letting it go through the carding process. I've taken this first uh, batch off the drum and I'm going to send it through again. And I'll send it through this way. So a couple tips that I just wanted to include here are um, number one is don't hurt your fingers. This is equipment that can really uh, damage your skin if you're not careful. I've actually scratched myself just walking by it and catching my arm on the little tines. They're sharp. Be careful. Okay, so the next thing is when you are feeding the fiber into the drum card, or if you're putting it directly onto the large drum, you never ever want to hold the fiber back. If you need to slow down how quickly it's being taken up, you should stop carding, adjust the fiber, and then start carding again. If you are pulling the fiber against the card, the carding that's taking place, it will grip the fiber tighter and it will get it sunken down into the tines on the drum and then it won't be able to go through the carding process, it'll just be snagged down in there deep. So you want it to be just a very gentle thing. And then the other thing, which is what I was talking about earlier with the problems where it can snag and snarl your fiber. The way to avoid that when you are feeding it in is to turn the crank very slowly. If you turn it quickly, that's where you run the risk of stretching, snapping, and snarling your fiber. Another tip I forgot to mention is slowly feed it in. Don't clump it in there or it won't all have the chance to get um, separated with the tines. It'll just be a big clump and only the edges will get carded and that defeats the purpose. So put it through nice and slow, small batches. second time through. I'll take it off in just one moment, but I wanted to talk about a couple advantages of using the drum carter. And one of those is that the short bits and uh, inconsistent fibers will come off on the liquor drum, which is right here, the liquor in. So you can see this is a little shortcut right there that I don't want in my final yarn. And conveniently, it popped right off of the larger portion and got stuck on the card, on the liquor in. So that is a benefit. It will pick out some of that. It isn't completely consistent, so it's always good to go over it with your own eyeballs. Another awesome thing about using a drum card is that a lot of the vegetable matter will actually fall off from the carding process. On the hand cards, it will uh, drop the vegetable matter and things out of the fiber. So usually when I do the hand cards, I do it over a surface that's easy to sweep up or I put down an old raggy towel that it'll fall down on and that's easy to clean as well. But if I swipe my hand underneath there you can see all this is uh, just little bits that came out of the fiber so that is a benefit to drum carding I'll have to <laughs> wipe that up that is a benefit to drum carding is uh, the ability that it has to get some of that finer vegetable matter out of the fiber of course you don't want to completely depend on it to do the job for you but every step of the way you remove more and more and more hopefully by the time you spin it's very minimal once you have your final yarn you'll be good to go I'm now removing this fiber from the drum carter and this is the final pass through so I'll just find that little channel with my doffer pin fluff that right off and as I let it turn 
I will gently roll it this way. So I just gently roll and turn, roll and turn, roll and turn until it comes all the way back around. And there I have my lovely little mini bat ready to spin. So let's compare the three processes to get the fiber prepped and ready to spin. So here we are back to the table and we have all three uh, preps to compare. So the first one is the hand prep. So there's a little more inconsistency there, um, but that's easy to just come across and uh, pull it apart. And there we go, it's all floofed and ready. The next way that uh, we could compare is with the hand cards. And these are two of the little bats that I pulled off of the hand cards. And it's a quicker way to go. And then finally, the most efficient, uh, but also a little bit of the most finicky is with the drum card. And that is my lovely, um, my lovely narrow mini bat that it produced. And if I unroll this, you can see how much fiber I was able to process. It's still going. So you can see how much fiber I was able to process with the um, drum card, and that's quite a lot. So it's definitely the most efficient, and of course, also the most expensive equipment. But there we have it. Drum card, hand card, hand. Can you see how big this basket is? It's not very heavy, but it is loaded. I am just about ready to spin. I have a tiny bit more fiber left to card. So I hope that you'll subscribe and like this video and come back to see the next part of the journey of processing this alpaca blanket from raw all the way to yarn. I'll see you in the next one. Happy spinning!